Everyone, welcome to the news in details. Now, Christians in various parts of the country celebrated the Easter Sunday. They point out that their faith is based on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Olive Nete reports. Across the country, followers of different churches and religions who believe in Jesus Christ attended church services in a big number to celebrate Easter. The day was marked with worship and praise songs and teachings that talks about the occasion. This is a special and important day for all Christians because it is the resurrection of Christ. If he wasn't raised, we would not be alive because our hope is in the resurrection of Christ. Christ is a powerful man and a special person. This Easter is joy to us. The resurrection that we celebrate today is what made us this joyful. Marie Claudine Hurichinga, a pastor at Bedside the Holy Church, points out that this day means victory to Christians. This is a big celebration for us because it's our victory. In Christ we find salvation, in Christ we are redeemed and we are healed. This day is also marked by other religious rites such as baptism and also communion. It was a joyful day for parents whose children got baptized on this celebration. Consolateur Innocent, the highest priest of the Cathedral St. Michel, points out how a Christian should behave. A Christian should behave like Jesus Christ. This earth that we live on has so many difficulties, so many distractions and temptations, but Christ overcame all of that and gave us a leading example till he went to the cross where he faced death and trials, but he defeated all of that. He resurrected, saying, Peace be upon you. Do not be discouraged. Look upon me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever believes in me will live with me. But for him to reach that, he has to go through what I went through and accept to truly become a child of God. The message of Easter focused on love, forgiveness, and also about healing, because Jesus went through all of that until he defeated death. Olive Nete, RTV News. Religious officials have been noting that the message that Easter brings come to help people heal from the psychological and emotional wounds that the genocide against the Tutsi left. Our colleague John Patrick Quizera sat down with the head of the Anglican Church in Rwanda, Archbishop Dr. Lohan Banda, to speak about his and other important matters to do with Easter Sunday. Take a look. Looking at how this whole week of the Holy Week went, even from the Lent season and seeing what happened this last week, I feel like people were actually in a mood of celebrating Easter. And looking in our own country, we have seen that many people, even looking at this morning today, we saw many people coming to church and we see in the second service even more. So I would say looking in our country and looking outside of our country, I would say that yes, people are celebrating Easter in a very special way. The challenge is do we celebrate Easter with an understanding of the meaning of the Easter? Easter is the, is, is the victory over sin. Jesus has conquered sin and that victory is for us who believe and therefore should be, walk and, and, and be in solidarity with the death, with the resurrection and the hope that we have in the return and the returning of Jesus Christ when he returns. Mm. What do you think Easter uh, can play in the uh, unification of churches? Easter can play a big role in the unification of churches because what it reminds us is the unit is what brings us together. What brings us together is, is, is around the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we can celebrate what we have in common. We can celebrate the victory of Jesus over sin. We can reflect, we can reflect and celebrate on the new life that Christ gives those who accept him. And so that is a unifier, as I look at it. What do you think can be the role of this Easter in uh, healing a wounded heart of uh, genocide survivors? 
You know, we came from a week, what we call Holy Week. That Holy Week is a difficult week for the Christians. It's the reminder of the walk Jesus walked toward the cross. And then comes Friday, which is the death of, of, of Jesus, where then you lose hope. You wonder what happens next. It's the dark moment. The genocide against Tutsis in this country reduced this country to ashes. Lots of people lost their lives. They were killed for who they were. It was a dark moment. But we don't stay in that dark moment. I thank God that we celebrate. So this week is a memorial week where we remember, but also where we renew and rebuild our lives. I celebrate where we are as a country. I celebrate the fact that the genocide was stopped. And so as we come to this Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday, it is a reminder that we can, we can remember what happened, but we can also renew and we can also rebuild our lives, our country, and we can celebrate the victory against the genocide, but at the same time, have hope. At the same time, be united. At the same time, be love one another. At the same time, be one people, one nation, one country that is united to rebuild our country and to rebuild our lives, but also to teach a lesson to the rest of the world. President Paul Kagame recently concluded state visits to the Caribbean island nations of Jamaica and Barbados as he prepares to assume the chairmanship of the Commonwealth this coming June. Rada's Presidential Press Secretary Stephanie Nyombaire elaborates more on those visits. The President held a very extensive discussion with his counterpart, the Prime Minister Holness, about which specific areas can Rwanda and Jamaica cooperate in in order to advance our economies. Those areas which were included in the bilateral agreements that were signed on political consultations as well as tourism was to increase exchanges of expertise in the field of ecotourism as well as trade and investment and different opportunities that both Jamaica and Rwanda can both benefit from. President Kagame concluded his visit to the Caribbean in Barbados where he met the leaders of the country. He paid a courtesy call to President Sandra Mason and held extensive bilateral and tete, -tete meetings with Prime Minister Mia Motley. It became clear throughout their discussions that both Prime Minister Mia Motley and President Kagame share a lot in common. They share the belief that the size of their countries should not limit their ambition. They exchange on various sectors which can move both countries forward, one of them being biotechnology with Rwanda establishing a vaccine manufacturing capability and Barbados' interest in doing the same. They also discussed the lessons of the COVID-19 pandemic which had a disproportionate impact on small economies but also taught us lessons about the ability for technology to make borders obsolete. Both countries signed a memorandum of understanding agreeing to further deepen the relationship between the two countries, especially in the field of trading with each other, exchanging experiences with each other, from tourism to sports, to the economy, to innovation, to ICT. President Kagame, who will be assuming the chairmanship of the Commonwealth at the Chogam meeting in June, considered this visit as an opportunity to better get to know the Caribbean countries, but to also have concrete steps in order to further the relationships between the Caribbean and Africa. Suffers of the condition of hemophilia in Rwanda have been thanking the government for providing facilities they could only previously find in South Africa and France at great cost. Amos saying Jung's blood cannot clot properly on its own, meaning internal or external bleeding for him would be a death sentence if not dealt with properly a condition Prince Ngabo also has. Even a simple bruising on the fleshy part of your body, not necessarily on the joints, can result in blood welling up inside your body. Parents should be particularly attentive of this when it comes to their children and look for any discoloration. 
that can cause excruciating pain, leaving a person unable to eat or sleep. I would be in terrible pain. Yeah. We were aware of the condition, but back then there were no medicines, at least not here in Rwanda anyway. Importing 1,000 units of a clotting factor product would cost around 2 million Rwandan francs, and a person like me needs 2,300 units. How was I supposed to afford more than 4 million Rwandan francs for a single injection? All they could do then was give us blood transfusions to stop us from bleeding out, and we would spend a long time in hospital. Medical experts say one in 5,000 people suffer from hemophilia, and the vast majority are always men. Both hemophilia A and B, uh, is, we have it also in Rwanda. Uh, it's one of rare disease, but it is present in Rwanda. According to the statistics uh, worldwide, uh, we should expect that among 5,000 male, one should have hemophilia. Uh, according to the population of Rwanda, uh, that is, I think, between 12 to 13 million, uh, we should expect around 1,000 patients with hemophilia. However, the association of hemophilia in Rwanda has registered only 50 patients with hemophilia. That means that most of patients with hemophilia are in the community and are not, well, are not yet identified. So that is the biggest problem that we should, together with the health facilities and uh, association, to try to reach everyone with hemophilia and everyone with the risk to have a child with hemophilia. That means someone whom the mother is a carrier of hemophilia. Uh, as uh, the science says, hemophilia severity is classified into three uh, classes, severe, moderate, and mild. So those who are less than 1% factors uh, in their body, they are very severe and those can bleed spontaneously especially in the joints, but sometimes very cerebral, intracerebral hemorrhage that can lead to death. Uh, the treatment now is available in Rwanda and diagnosis tools. Uh, we thank the government of Rwanda for that because the, nowadays, Sehashka, Chigari University Teaching Hospital, has a machine that can diagnose hemophilia, both A and B, uh, and we have donations for factors. That is the gold standard treatment for hemophilia. Uh, so we still have the task to get to reach everyone with hemophilia and be registered so that those facilities that the country has can reach them properly. Since 2020, hemophilia patients have been able to access services here in Rwanda that they would previously have to go abroad to get. Before uh, uh, 2020, we were in difficult of getting medicines and getting good ways of diagnosis. We were in obligation to send the test in South Africa or in France. But after we have been accepted by the RGB, we have got an opportunity to receive a donation of an automatic coagulation factor machine for diagnosis at CHUK. And then uh, we've got also an opportunity of a World Federation of Hemophilia to get medic med medicines known as factor 9 factor 8 and any other kind of factors which are not very common in Rwanda. And then those factors are donations as also the machine is a donation. For the diagnosis, the patient has only to pay the moderator ticket on the side on basis of uh, Mutuel de Santé, and then uh, he is uh, examined by the doctor or the physician, and after that he receives uh, the treatment 
as factors uh, for free because uh, they arrive at CHUK as the nations. The 17th of April is World Hemophilia Day and 50 people are known to suffer from the condition here in Rwanda, while in 2019 more than 1.2 million were identified globally. On Easter, some Kigali residents have decided to visit various places for relaxation and entertainment. In neighborhoods in Kigali City, parents, children and youth chose to visit various places to relax as school holidays are ending as well. While celebrating Easter, they say it was fun to talk and relax at places outside their homes. I'm called Megan. We played, we ate, we drank and we have now finished and we are heading home. I thank Jesus. It's a day of celebration as the school holidays are also coming to an end or what I can call a bye-bye vacation. So this was our opportunity as parents to make it fun for our children so that they can go back to school, not feeling like they missed out or lacked anything with us. The organizers of entertainment events say they thank God and the government for their help in overcoming the COVID-19 pandemic as people are back to attending events, hence organizers making profits as well. The Minister of Local Government, Katawazi Jean-Marie Vianney, says that recreation is at the forefront in the government's projects as it is its responsibility to ensure that citizens are living a comfortable life. Children should grow up in loving homes so that even if they are poor, there is transparency between parents and children so that children can open up and talk about how they see things, what they think, and their wishes because that's how strong families can be built. Even though parents can get caught up with work, sometimes for very many hours, like ourselves, time should be created for the family, for children, and for spouses as well, so that we lead happy lives. Easter, also called Pascha, or Resurrection Sunday, is a Christian festival and cultural holiday commemorating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, described in the New Testament as having occurred on the third day of his burial following his crucifixion by the Romans at Calvary. Well, there you have it. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. Bye for now.